Okay, last question in Vine Line Six Forty Week Three. Shoot, this is a it's a filter. It's an active filter. We can see it's a well. I hope you can see. Go back and look at the notes. It's a non or it's an inverting amplifier configuration. Um, we have an impedance in the um, forward path or in the input path here, and we have an impedance in the feedback path. So I'm just going to draw like an imaginary uh, box around this. We can consider this um, the feedback impedance ZF. And in the notes, I'll write it over here, we showed that the um, output voltage, it's going to be a sinusoid, um, so written as a phaser, divided by the input voltage, also a sinusoid, so written as a phaser, is minus ZF, can do better than that, minus ZF divided by R1, well, Z1. So this being Z1. Well, we have the transfer function. That's this. So the challenge here really, Z1 is easy because it's just the same as R1. Uh, we need to figure out what the impedance of this uh, ZF, this mess of uh, resistor and capacitor in parallel, then in series with another resistor. So let's write that down before we start. So we'll have uh, ZF is equal to, it's RB, and it's in series, so we add, plus um, RA in parallel with C. So this is a shorthand for a parallel. Um, what that actually is, uh, I hope you remember from class, um, Maybe we should remind ourselves over here that the impedance of a resistor is just R and the impedance of a capacitor is 1 over J omega C. And what else do we need to remind ourselves? Two impedances in parallel. So if I had Z1 in parallel with Z2, that would be the same as the product on the top, Z1, Z2, divided by the sum Z1 plus Z2. So I have these in parallel, so I'll have RA multiplied by 1 over J omega C divided by RA plus 1 over J omega C. So th this is resistors in parallel, or impedances in parallel. Uh, let's do a little bit of simplification of that. So we'll have RB, so that will stay there. I multiply top and bottom by J omega C, so I'll end up with RA on top, and on the bottom I'll have 1 plus J omega RA C. Okay, so that's part of the hard work done. Um, I'm going to even go a step further than this, and I'm going to turn this into the ratio to complex numbers. So I will have common denominator of 1 plus j omega ra rac and on the top I'm gonna have um, rb plus um, sorry let's do it properly so it's gonna be rb into 1 plus j omega rac plus RA, um, which equals RA plus RB plus J omega RA RB C all over 1 plus J omega R A C. Okay, I know this is messy, but if you, if you look what we have, it's not all that bad. We have um, a real number, a complex number on top, a real number, a complex number. So it's two com ratio to complex numbers, um, and that's pretty easy to work with from this point forward. Um, let's put in the value. So in the question, um, let's write these down. We had uh, we were given the values. 
that um, RA was equal to 20 kilo ohms, RB was equal to 5 kilo ohms, C was equal to 0 0.05 microfarads by 10 to the minus 6 and the last resistor R1 was equal to 5 kilo ohms okay so let's put this all together we are going to get a total gain let's put this together I worked it out as V out over V in is equal to minus ZF over Z1, which is actually equal to R1, so let's write R1. And when I put all these values in, you can do this on the side, you should get, if I've done it correctly, or if you've done it correctly, 25 by 10 to the power of 3. Um, Sorry, I'm just jumping straight for the good. So it's minus 5 plus j omega 0 0.001 divided by 1 plus j omega 0 0.001. So there is a bit of there's a bit of a jump from here to here. There's some uh, you got to get your calculator, get your calculator out and do um, the multiplication, and you should end up with this um, expression here for the transfer function. So now we've gone from a circuit with some elements to what is a transfer function. So we can um, work from this point forward. So the first question was, um, what was the first question? Let's remind ourselves. Uh, what is the gain for this circuit at very low frequency? Well, better question before that, what is the gain of the circuit? The gain of the circuit is the absolute value of the output voltage over the input voltage. So what we'd like to see is um, the absolute value of that complex number, or amplitude of the sinusoid, another way of saying it. And go back to the maths notes that I gave on Moodle, because you'll see that that's the same as as so the absolute value of a complex number divided by the absolute value of another complex number, you can actually divide the complex numbers first and then take the absolute value. Um, either way, we're going to do it this way um, with the ratio of two complex numbers. Um, so what, what are we looking for? So we're looking for when, well, before we get there, uh, this is going to be 5 squared plus J, sorry, not J, because it's we're taking the absolute value now. So the magnitude of that complex number is omega squared, um, and we get. Let's just write it as squared. Otherwise, I'll end up with a, f a whole lot of zeros divided by the square root of one squared plus omega squared, 0 0.001 squared. So this is the gain. Um, what's it going to be at a very low frequency? Well, when omega equals 0, what we get is V out over V in when omega equals 0 is equal to um, well, it's going to be square root of 5 squared over square root of 1 squared, so it's going to be 5. And um, what about the magnitude, or well, sorry, what about the phase shift? We would have to take the angle, so what it's easier to do to get the phase shift is to calculate the raw transfer function at that value. Um, let's move up a little bit. So just calculate the transfer function and figure out its angle. So I've gone for the magnitude, but I could have also just gone um, V out 
I would be in is equal to minus 5 plus j 0 because the frequency is 0, 0 0.001 divided by 1 plus j by 0, 0 0.001 and that's equal to minus 5. So that's the actual gain and remember this is a, this could be written as a complex number um, so minus 5 in polar form would be 5 at an angle of uh, 180 degrees and um, so this is the phase is 180 degrees because the actual ratio of the voltages it's a real number it turns out that it's perfectly inverted and the output voltage is perfectly inverted at when the frequency is zero. So when it's DC, we just get the, the uh, input is flipped upside down and amplified by five. Um, so that was the answer to part A. Yep, so this was the answer to part A. So that's magnitude is five and phase is 180. Um, what about part B? It says, what is the gain of this circuit for high frequency? Well, let's have a look. So we had um, V out over V in, and we want to calculate as omega heads towards infinity. Well, let's rewrite this a little bit. So we would have, um, oh, maybe I need to give myself more space. So we would have, I'm going to divide the top and the bottom um, by omega, by omega, yeah. So I'll end up, but what I'm looking for is this. I want to have 5 squared over omega squared inside the square root, um, plus 0 0.001 squared. And on the bottom, similarly, I'll have um, 1 squared over omega squared plus 0 0.001 squared and these two numbers will tend towards zero so this is goes towards zero approximately zero and this will tend towards zero as, o, as omega heads towards infinity uh, and I end up with an answer of one um, that's the magnitude but what about the actual value and um, similarly if I had it gone uh, V out over V in equals um, minus five over omega plus J by zero point zero zero one and one over omega plus J zero point zero zero one what do I get? I get minus 1. And we can write that in polar form as equal to 1 at an angle of 180 degrees. So the phase shift is again 180, off at infinity. OK, and we've already a answered part C. Um, first write an expression for the transfer function um, in terms of j omega uh, that was this one so this was the answer to part c which we already did earlier on and at what frequency does the gain become 2 uh, this is a bit tricky but you can do it and um, so this is part d so what we want is when is the gain V out as a phaser, magnitude of V out over V in as a phaser. When is that? At what frequency? Omega question mark is that equal to two? So there's a bit of um, algebra involved, but what you essentially want is to solve the expression square root of five squared plus omega squared zero point zero zero one squared divided by one squared plus omega squared 0 0.001 squared and that should be equal to 2 and I'm not going to labor it the details are in the um, written solution that was given but we end up with omega equals 2 6 4 5 point seven five 
remember omega is radians per second and omega is equal to 2 pi f so if we divide by 2 pi we get 421.1 hertz is the frequency at which the output voltage amplitude is twice the amplitude of the input voltage.